six paper towels, tore them off individually, and wet them and squeezed them out. And I'm just putting them here underneath plastic. There's a lot of preparation for doing inlaid colored porcelain. And this is one of the most important, and that is I make like a little damp box for them. So I've got four paper towels under this one, and I'm going to put two paper towels under this one. They're wet, and when I make the loaf of colored porcelain and cut them off, this is all set. So now my two little places are all ready, and then the fun begins. I get to pick what color I want. I have chestnut, coral red, mazarin, sky blue, yellow, and brilliant orange. What would you like me to use? Anybody have any preferences? Blues, oranges, yellows? Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. And, yellow. and a yellow. How about a, a blue or a green tone? Sounds good. Part with it. Then we'll be able to see them. So here's my yellow, brilliant orange. These have been sitting for three and a half weeks. So they are nice. And this is mazarin blue. That's a pretty blue one. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to skip ahead. This is steel wool, and I got the finest grade. It's grade triple aught, triple zero, and it is very fine steel wool. So as we go along, if any, when I cut the clay or I design, get the design going, if it's smeared at all, I don't worry about it because I will steel wool it once it is bone dry. So I'm going to pick, take just maybe a half pound of the yellow. <laughs> very precise, very precise. And then I'm going to. Roll this out. Thank you, Bonnie and Mary. I'm going to roll this out until it's about one fourth of an inch. Azarin blue. It looks pink. It has a little white in it. Who knows what I was thinking of the day I did this? That's okay. We work with it. So I roll out three colors. And if you, when you get started, if you don't want to use colored clay, because colored clay is expensive, and a lot of people think of it as precious, because it, it is expensive, it takes a long time to color, you can just simply use two clay bodies, a red one and a white, and, and get beautiful designs and make swirl wear. Do you primarily hand build your porcelain inlay or do you? I do both. I use like anything I have left from here, I'll put in a white um, number 15 ball of clay and I'll do swirl wear. But a lot of buttons and beads and things of that sort can be made with it. Okay. So now I have these three. And if I had not been away, I would have used another thing because this has color on it. So I'm going to cut each one in half. then layer them. And I should roll each one. Got that step. Don't want to forget any steps. This is making the loaf. 
and I've consciously not done them in order. I've consciously not put them so that they repeat. You can do it any way you want. Once you get it here, then you cut it. And then you can look at them and you can think, do I want them here? Do you want to put them together like that or like this? And I like this, so I'm going to put them. What's nice is you don't have to be fussy this, and you don't have to even them out. In fact, you get better results if you don't try and uh, be fussy or precise, I guess. But you can see how I have all this here and all this here. All the colors are, nothing is even. Um, and that's okay with this. Then I roll it down until it's about an inch, inch and a half thick. Cut it again. And I have this little bowl here. It's for all the tail ends because I found before I was getting them everywhere. So I pick them up, look at them, and see which way I want them. I think the other way will be better. Put them together. Roll them. Cut them a third time. This is the last time I'm cutting them because you don't want the design to get too fine. Here. Oh, that's nice. And I'm going to look the other way. <laughs> I like this. So then I'm just going to roll them just a little bit. Not much at all. This is my loaf. This is, to me, it looks like bacon strips, but this is my loaf. And then I get the tool that I made, and it feels really good. We were talking about it earlier to make your tools. And this is just simply a board that I bought at a do it yourself shop. It's just a little. Um, I think it's a decoupage board. And then I got mat board that is one fourth of an inch wide. I stapled it on in three places. In fact, it's called a rectangular 911 board. Willow, walnut hollow. <laughs> and I've had these for years. And the other thing is, I have my name on this one. I call them nose boards. I got this at the same place and I do like to put our names on them because we put our noses on them. <laughs> and then I get fishing line. And this is fishing line. It's, um, let's see, 12 pound. It, I find 12 pound is strong enough to do the cutting, but it's not, uh, so it's not as thick as a cutting wire. A regular putter cutting wire is just too thick. And then I have washers from putting lamps together, and I simply tie the fishing line onto each washer and make that. So this is, this is my loaf. I'm gonna get it down a few times here. And then, you can't laugh at me. I'll put my nose down here. And cut, and usually the first cut isn't beautiful. It's okay, but this is the first one that I cut. I'll cut a couple more. Then I put them immediately under here. If you don't, they dry out so quickly. And then they won't be quite as usable. So I'm going to cut three of those. 